Hello and welcome to another episode, another exclusive free training for my Money Tips followers. And welcome to this course, Mastering Your Money the Smart Way Without Working Harder, Lesson 5. If you've missed Lessons 1 to 4, then go back and check out whichever page you're looking at or whichever channel you're, you're looking at this in. And listen up on this because this is ex exclusively free for you. I'll be putting this out as a paid course very soon, but then it'll be expanded with, with, with slides and workbooks. But you've got a sneak preview into this, so, so do take note of this and, you know, and also take notes as you go along. So first of all, we're going to look today at reviewing your finances regularly. This is part of the S-M-A-R-T. We're now into R, review your finances regularly. And congratulations on getting this far. If you have been following me through the course, uh, you're well on the way, I believe, to becoming a money master if you follow the steps on, on this course. So in this, look, we're going to, in this lesson, we're going to look at reviewing your finances. Now, it's all very well planning, saving, uh, economize and then setting up investments but unless you review your plans on a regular basis they are likely to get off track or unstuck if you know what I mean just like a ship's captain you have to review the course and make adjustments to reach your destination otherwise you're going to end up somewhere else because the tide's blowing you one way the wind's blowing you another way and, you, and you'll just never get there okay so it's about reviewing and, and just making sure you are on the right course now, remember, I, I've mentioned this before. Think of yourself or your household, your family as a business in terms of managing your finances, not, not in everything else. You don't go and sack in the kids, right? But think of it as a business, right? What do well-managed businesses do, right? Businesses have a mission statement, a purpose, a plan, a business plan, right? They, they have some sort of direction they are going in. They review their plans once a year at least, to keep the ship on course, maybe monthly, maybe quarterly, but at least once a year. They hold regular board meetings and review their plans, performances, their targets, right? Most people don't have a target. Businesses have targets, right? They hold annual meetings with their accountants, their legal advisors, their shareholders, their, their financial advisors. And they also have a dis disaster recovery plan in case of fire, flood, robbery, or IT failure. When I was a, an elected councillor and mayor, uh, our council had a very elaborate, like most government departments, they had a very elaborate disaster recovery plan. In other words, if, if a terrorist were, were to destroy that building, they could, the next day or maybe the same day, they could be set up with the IT systems at another location and they would be fully backed up and ready to go. Most people don't have that. Most people don't even back up their own PC or laptop or their photos, right? But they have a full disaster recovery plan and, and they hold reserves, right? They hold reserves. They have a contingency fund to see them through the lean times. In fact, I used to say to the council, why are you keeping £10 million in, in a reserve fund? They said, we need it in case, you know, if we could lose all our income. We could lose money. The government could cut our budget. We need to be able to survive, right? So, and businesses do the same. A lot of people don't have even a few hundred dollars or a few hundred pounds in reserve in their account. They are totally broke right? Skint, as we say in the UK. Barassic lint, skint. That's a, a Cockney rhyming slang. I'm barassic, they say. They don't even have enough money to, to sort out a broken down washing machine or, or, a, or a flat tyre, you know. So then what do they have to do? They have to borrow money at high interest rates, which then puts them further into debt, right? So I've talked about this before. You must have at least a, a month's salary, six months' salary in reserve. But even if you can't do that, have something there. Don't have something in a jam jar somewhere that you've got some money to fall back on, right? This is what businesses do. They also project forward. They use what's called a cash flow forecast to anticipate the peaks and the troughs in their spending. So if their rent is paid quarterly, they'd have a cash flow forecast. So they say, right, we've got this income come, this income coming in, this is going out, this is going, and then quarterly, this big spike in expenditure, we have to pay our rent. Or maybe they have salary dates, so they know exactly, exactly when the salary dates come out. And this can be done on a spreadsheet, it can be done on a bit of paper, but they, they know what's, you know, they project forward. You don't just wake up one morning and say, oh, we've got to pay the salary today. Oh, I haven't got any money in the bank. Sorry, guys, I, I, I forgot to pay the salaries because I haven't got any money. No, you, it's, the staff would walk out, wouldn't they? And I used to do the salaries in my business, and it was 
always a, a big crunch moment, you know, have, you know, making sure the money's there, doing the salary, payroll and all that sort of stuff. It was a big job, but you have to project forward and know this is coming. And similarly, for, throughout the year, they would project forward much longer than just in a, in a month, right? So they anticipate the peaks and the troughs. So as a family, your peaks might in expenditure might be holiday times or school, going back to school, buying stuff for kids, Christmas time. Or, or whatever, or in the month it could be your mortgage payment, your rent payment, right? So you must know what's, not only what's coming in, but projecting forward as well, okay? Businesses then also review things. They review their mortgages, their debts, their, their bank loans, their, their overdraft, their leases. If they've got leases on photocopy machines, uh, cars, whatever, you know, you have to review these to make sure they're getting the best deal, and they review their insurance policies, their liabilities, their savings rates on their reserves. They review their expenditure on their utilities. It can be very large for some businesses, so they have to keep shopping around to get the best deal. Their suppliers, are they getting the best deal from, from their suppliers, They're supplying them with goods and services? Water, broadband, all these sorts of things have to be reviewed. So what, let, let's look at this in more detail. So your head office is, is your home, right? Um, your boardroom can be your kitchen table. That's where most financial decisions are made, on the kitchen table, not around the TV. Um, now, when I was running the business, we didn't have a boardroom as such. We didn't waste office space. It was valuable on a dedicated boardroom with a, a shiny oak table and leather chairs and that sort of thing. And, you know, you don't have to hold be meetings in your home and an office. We, we, hold, we actually held most of our most productive meetings at a local cafe over a cup of coffee and a croissant. And we'd sit down with three or four of us and, and discuss things. Actually getting out sometimes helped. You know, we'd also generate ideas and build morale by taking the staff away on team building weekends. They were great fun. Or just buying a pizza on a Friday, they loved that. And we'd just sit around and all share a couple of boxes of pizzas and it was great. And you know, you get to know them and they talk about things and you, it's not a formal brainstorming meeting, but it actually generated a lot of things because some people were, were too scared to speak up in a meeting, but they talk around a, a pizza. So you could do the same with the family. You could have a family out and we're gonna discuss things. So it's not boring then, you know? Um, and I was talking to someone recently, he's a relative of mine actually, and, and he, he does this, he, he held regular monthly meetings with his wife and, and, and looks at the bank, so he said, you know, what did you spend here? Look, you're spending a lot of money on Starbucks, you know, that's three pounds a day, that's you know, nearly a hundred pounds a month, do you, know, do you realise that? In fact, she was always getting a bit stressed about it because he's a saver and she's a spender. So it's interesting how, and, and he knows exactly what's coming, he's got, he's got his spreadsheet, he as you can probably guess, he's an accountant by trade. So it kind of goes with the territories of an analytical person. But even if you're not an analytical person, even if you're one of these people that just socializes, loves life and, and don't care about things, you still have to do this. You have to write things down and put them on a spreadsheet. But that, that spreadsheet that he does keeps his finances on track. He's probably got the first penny he ever earned and he'll never run out of money. And in fact, I said to his wife, I said, well, you know, he will never run out of money because he, he, he watches things. He keeps and he'll review uh, suppliers. He's, he's on the phone to energy suppliers. You know, he, he knows when he's due a, a £10 refund and he'll chase it down, you know, to make sure he gets that refund after he switched supplies. So he'll never let the grass grow under his feet. And that's great. He will never run out of money. OK, so the general principle is just to sit down with your partner, your, your family, your advisor. Maybe you have a financial advisor on a regular basis, monthly or yearly. You, know, you can't sit down with your financial advisor every month, but at least once a year to review your finances and plans. Maybe you've got investments. Maybe you want to know that you're in the right fund. If your pension fund is in the right place or it's, how is it doing? Is it performing well? All these sorts of things. And, and most people never do this. And it's no, no coincidence that most people are struggling with money or, or just broke, right? The majority of people are struggling with money. The majority of people who, I learned this in financial services, the majority of people who retire will retire uh, either broke or dependent on the state or, or just not be able to retire and will be living in poverty. That's, that's been a fact, you know, for hundreds of years and it's still a fact today. So don't be like most people, be, be like the people that can do things and, and become financially free. And if you have a family, make sure you include them in your, your plans and dreams, right? Make sure you're not leaving them behind and just going off and making these plans up yourself. And, and say if you're the breadwinner, for instance, but not telling everybody about it. Uh, so to just, you've got to do this today. Most people don't do it. You've got to sit down and do this. And, and, and it, you know, if you watch my, uh, I'm going to give you a link to a video, which is a bit more detailed 
I'll, I'll give you a free gift which will help you manage your money and, 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 and you can download that for free and that will transform your life straight away. OK, most people don't do it. Most people just think mm, I should be financially free. I wish I was financially free, but uh, it's not for me. I don't think I could do it. If I tried that, it wouldn't work. And then they just drift off to a place called Someday Isle. Have you heard of Someday Isle? It's a lovely island. It's, it's, you can be very comfortable there. You don't have to worry about anything. It's called Someday Isle. Someday I'll make some goals. Someday I'll get my manage, money managed. Someday I'll fill out that spreadsheet so I know where my, my money is going. Right. You're with me. Right. Now, look at the three R's of money management. Now, I mentioned this in my book. Yes, money can buy you happiness. I talk about the three R's of money management. I probably can't find it here now, but it's the three R's of money management. Right. And this is where I, I've got a simple formula. Right. The three R's. The three R's are one, read and review which is read and review uh, uh, your bank credit card statements, your mortgage statements, read uh, and list the regular payments on your outgoings and on all of your accounts and credit cards so you know exactly what's coming in and out. Read loan agreements and terms before you sign them and ask and take advice. It was amazing how many uh, times when I was dealing with mortgages for people the mortgage is the biggest commitment they'll ever make, the biggest loan they'll ever take, hundreds of thousands of pounds in some cases, sometimes half a million pounds, a million pounds. And yet people don't even read all of the mortgage terms. Some people do, but a lot of people, I was amazed that they didn't even read it. Just get me to sign it and give me the money. Just get me to sign it. And then a couple of years later, they say, oh, I didn't realise if I redeemed that mortgage, there was a penalty. I said, yeah, it's in the mortgage terms, you know. So, so just read it. And then another thing you could read is a simple book on managing your finances, or look online. You can read this, in fact. Uh, but just just read about it. If, if you're not sure how to fill in the spreadsheet, look it up on YouTube. How do I fill in the spreadsheet to manage my money? Now, this might seem obvious, but I can tell you from my experience in financial services that most people don't even follow these simple steps, right? Now, Brian Tracy, the, the great speaker that I met once in America, he once said that reading for an hour a day on a subject and taking a few notes will make you an expert within a short period maybe three to six months, and a world-renowned authority within three to five years. In fact, he said you could do a degree based on an hour's reading a day. And I know this is true. You could actually complete a degree because I've done it. And you can complete this if you broke it down to an hour a day. I didn't quite do it that way. I, I used to leave it until one weekend and do 10 hours. But, you know, you could do it by chipping away at, at, at a, a, an hour a day. In fact, the other speaker, Zig Ziglar, worked out that he could write a book by just writing, I think it was like 45 minutes a day. And that's what he did. He wrote, no, he wrote a page and a half a day. So he broke it down to about an hour and a page and a half a day. He also worked out how much weight he could lose by just chipping away every day by doing a bit of exercise. So it's amazing what you can do in small chunks, okay? But just, just read, reading is very powerful. Oprah Winfrey said she got out of poverty by, by reading books. She was born in dirt poverty, right? So dirt poor, I mean. and. This this is like really on a shack. Uh, and if you look at the movie, The Colour Purple, that, that is partly based on the way her life went as a young girl. But she got out of that by by reading. Readers are leaders, as they say. The second R is revise. Revise your credit cards and loans and shop around for better deals. You can get loads of deals out there for credit cards, interest free for a period and all these sorts of things. Revise the minimum payment to make sure you clear your debt faster. Revise your loan and your mortgage loan if you can get a better deal without penalties. You can even revise the payments, maybe increase them a bit to clear your loan faster, to clear your debt faster. Revise your utility supplies like gas or electricity if it's possible where you live. Uh, and revise your insurance on your life, your health, your car, your home, your personal liability. Revise your will. If you haven't made a will, make a will. Revise and adjust your savings and pensions to keep up with inflation, to make sure that you're going to reach your, your target and actually be able to retire. Because if you don't, you'll end up at 65. Go, Whoa, I haven't got enough money. What am I going to do? And don't rely on the government because the government pension fund is the taxpayers, is what the pay, taxpayers are paying now. There's no fund there with your name on it that your, your entitlement to a state pension is based on people's tax that they are paying at the time. And we don't know what that will be in, in years to come. So don't rely on the government. So the next stage after reviewing where you uh, make the necessary adjustments is to, is to look at you know, where you want to be. This could be um, you know, becoming financially free in the next five years, the next year, or just living comfortably within your budget, right? 
Um, what, what is it you really want? And then you've got to put aside something for the future as based on what you want. So if you want to save for a house, how much do you need? How much do you need to save every month? And and just, just putting that aside for each other. You've got to make some plans, right? If you can't make some plans, maybe you need a money coach, right? So look, and the other thing to remember is loyalty does not pay with companies. And, and these companies frequently offer better deals to new customers. In fact, the regulators here are looking at that. They said, why are companies offering better deals to new customers and excluding existing customers? And yet they leave their loyal customers on higher terms, higher rates, higher tariffs. I was talking about this the other day in my podcast on electricity going up this year in, in the UK. And many people are stuck on higher tariffs. No one's going to tell you to get off that tariff. You've got to get off your you know what and make the call to get on a lower tariff. And they leave their loyal customers on these poorer terms. In fact, they even walk up the price bit by bit, year by year. They just chip away and put the price up. That's what they do to their loyal customers. But if a new customer comes along, oh, yes, we'll give you this deal. We'll give you two years of discounts. We'll give... So you've got to be like the new customer shopping around to get a better deal. So shopping around for better deals will save you a, literally a small fortune over time. It saved me thousands and thousands of pounds just by changing my mortgage deals, changing my utilities, all, so, all sorts of things. Even ringing up the company and saying, look, your deal is rubbish. I can get a better deal somewhere else. What are you going to do about it? And they'll put you through to a retention, customer retention department who will offer you a better deal. You can do it with your mobile phones. You can do it with your mortgages. You can do it with lots of things. It won't always work, but then if it doesn't work, you just go somewhere else. Remember the old saying, a penny saved is a penny earned, right? Saving a dollar or a pound or a hundred dollars, a hundred pounds, is just like going out and having to earn that money. So if you can save a hundred dollars by, by, by phoning up a company and saying, what can you do for me this year? Can you give me a cheaper deal? That's like going out having to work maybe several hours, maybe for some people, 10 hours, you know? So, so why not do it? It's just a simple phone call. Businesses know that the cost of saving adds to the bottom line profits. Anything they can save on uh, costs and staff costs and payments, that can add to the, actually literally add to increase their profits many, many fold. It's even better than sometimes going out and generating more business. Now, it's never been easy to do this. You've got so many online comparison sites in most countries, not everywhere in the world, but you know this can enable you to save money almost instantly with, with very little effort. And you don't even have to switch supplies, as I said, because they, they want to keep you as a customer. The third R then is record. Record your income and expenditure on a spreadsheet or one of the many apps. I've been banging on about this, and I'm gonna say it again. Companies record their income and expenditure sheet, and they prepare monthly, quarterly, and annual accounts to check up on how they're doing before they submit their tax return. Oh, tax, yes. Make sure you record that as well. The directors have a board meeting, review their previous year, and the plan ahead. They, they might plan for three, five, ten years ahead. They budget. They make plans, invest for the future to stay competitive in the marketplace. You should do the same and realize that you are your own corporation. You are the chairman of your board, the directors running your own economy or what I call your you economy, you economy. The, the big wide world economy doesn't matter so much as what's going on in your own you economy. Just like a garden, OK, you'll find your finances need nurturing. They need water to stay to stay in shape. They need the weeds pulling out. OK, they, they need a bit of attention. Otherwise, they'll die. A small garden might need an hour a week. You know, a larger one might require more and might require some part time help. A huge garden or an estate requires full time staff constantly working on it. When you go to these stately homes, you see nice gardens and nice lawns with with like grass cut like Wimbledon surface that that takes work and there's people working on it like a farm you know a farm a farmer knows when to plant seeds when to weed when to tend when to harvest them and when to sell a farm is a business so you can use that as an analogy to looking after your own business just like a farm okay now yes these are, these actions require effort they require action they require discipline to follow them through but not doing them will cause you more pain so it's like do you want the pleasure of not doing them or do you want the pain of not doing them and if you try and convert the pleasure of doing nothing into the pain of doing nothing maybe that will make you take action what's easier right giving the lawn a quick trim every week or waiting till it's built up after a month and wading through a jungle of thick weeds after years of neglect, which is easier, okay? Which is easier to pull out a small weed like this where you can pull it out with your finger or wait until it's a big weed and you have to dig it out, okay? Just, just giving that 
but a bit of time and you know would, would just save you years of hassle years of pain now let's go on to, to what the rich do. i've written about this here the rich the rich habits the rich look after their finances and think about their finances all the time not just when there's a crisis or when they've run out or something's gone wrong or there's a disaster they look at it all the time they know what's coming in they know what's going out and they they're always shopping around for a better deal or better investment opportunities they're looking at investment they're looking what to do with their money how can they money make their money work harder for them rather than them just working hard for their money as it as it said in rich dad poor dad the rich work make their money work hard for, for them the poor work hard for their money but they're always looking around for deals right the poor and the less well off and the broke don't it's as simple as that right despite having a limited income i found that those struggling with money are more likely to have no idea where it's coming and where it's going and they also make bad financial decisions they buy expensive overpriced consumer goods and they rarely review their finances which is why they remain broke and, and trapped in a rut in fact you can see people if you go to, to poorer areas that they will go to the local shop and buy things that cost maybe double the price of, of making that extra walk or bus ride to a supermarket and they oh we haven't got a supermarket near us on our council estate well so what you can find a supermarket you can find cheaper deals but it's amazing I, I see people with very little money going into corner shops which always are going to charge more for for wine or cigarettes or or food and they just buy it and these are the people on limited budgets whereas the wealthy people i see them drive into cheap supermarkets like lidl or they have an account with costco and they're looking around the supermarket shelves to see what is reduced it's amazing the different mentalities of the people with money as opposed to the people who haven't got money and will probably always remain like that now on, on bank accounts some of the the challenger banks that are coming out these are new banks that have neat features which allow you to manage your 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 money more easily on your smartphone rather than waiting for your bank statement to come in they give you an expenditure summary they they send you an alert on your phone as soon as the money goes in or out of your account which is great you know i've just recent like today i've had a couple of alerts oh that's gone out that's gone out that, that's fantastic and or a direct, direct debit has gone out so I, I like that you know and if i use a card that card in the store i'm immediately informed that, that money has gone out of my account they also allow you to set up little pots of money we talked about this in accumulating money in the previous module that you can set up pots of money for short-term savings medium-term savings long-term savings emergency funds giving funds whatever you want to call it they allow you to do this within in the account so the neat little features so if your bank is not giving you what you want have a look at some of the, the newer banks or, or ask your banks if they've got these features some of the more traditional banks are now catching up with that and they're, they're offering similar features so let's have a look at a summary today of lesson five summarize think of yourself as a business and following best business practice this will in, you know literally transform your life you know another thing i forgot to mention that businesses have insurances they they they, they have in, they have liability insurances most people don't have that that's why when things go wrong um, a business can say right we'll claim on that insurance poor people don't have insurance they say oh i can't afford it but they can afford big tvs they can afford to drink every night they can afford to go to the pub they can afford to smoke uh, you know a packet of cigarettes every day but they can't afford insurance and that's why when things go wrong for them it really goes badly wrong now even if you work for someone else you can still have the mindset of a company hiring yourself out for money you can say well yeah I, I go to work for that that company every day but I, I am still my own business I'm just hiring out my time and my services for money okay that's the first stage of becoming wealthy okay the next stage might be to stop uh, you know exchanging your time for money and start making money for yourself but that's another that's another uh, module so what are the action steps today follow the three r's formula which I've, I've given you there read or review revise and record uh, read everything you can do you can on money and that includes reading a good quality paper every day or twice a week maybe in the wall street journal the financial times go to the library if you can't buy it you know and, and read books about money but 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 keep a track on money or just look online and see what's happening with money what's happening with the world economy i know that you can't do everything about the world economy but it's still useful to know about what's out there what's going on and you can learn a lot from this i also talked about in previous modules taking a financial advisor course you can do this without becoming a financial advisor you can take a course that will open up a big whole new world of of knowledge to you if you take that financial advisor course 
OK, the other thing there is read, uh, revise and uh, read agreements and investments. OK, and review your, your finances monthly, quarterly or at very least annually. So that's a summary today um, of reviewing your finances and congratulations on, on completing this module. In the next lesson, we're going to be looking at reviewing your finances. And, and so the next module, we've done that already. The next module, we're going to be looking at uh, the, 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 another subject which will take you further forward in, in your, your financial journey. Now, millionaires and uh, millionaire habits have been studied for you know, for, for, for the last hundred years, even at academic level by studies, long term studies by Harvard University. And, you know, we, we know what millionaires do. Best selling books like The Science of Getting Rich and Think and Grow Rich were written almost a century ago. I've published my own book, as I said, yeah, uh, on the subject. So, you know, we, we know what the rich people do. We know what millionaires do. And they because they, they've been studied so extensively and they these habits and traits are, are, are published. They're there. They're documented. And we know that these success habits leaves tracks. You can follow the tracks. And all you have to do really is to follow their tracks to become wealthy and financially free. Often we overthink it. We're trying to reinvent the wheel when, you know, the, the success systems are already there. OK, don't overthink it too much. You know, follow the, the system. Um, you know, it's amazing how if you go back to a school reunion, you can see that someone who wasn't quite as intelligent as you is making more money than you. And you think, why is that? You know, perhaps they're just following a formula. They've just focused on one thing rather than trying to, to reinvent the wheel all the time. So follow the tracks. Now, if you'd like to learn more about investing, managing your money, or maybe becoming a professional investor, property investor, or if you'd like to be financially free without necessarily working any harder than you are, watch my free video, which you can find at the bottom of this, uh, of this page that you're looking at. There's a link to that. And as I said, I'll give you a special free gift, which will, you can download and you can immediately transform your finances just for attending the online training. So thanks for listening today and congratulations on completing this module and, and go out there and do these things. Don't join Sunday aisle. Just get started and do it. Thanks for listening.